All right, guys. Today. All right, guys. Today, I want to discuss the top five guns that I just don't understand why anybody buys them. Now, to start with, I'm not talking about guns that are mistreated. I'm not talking about guns that are poorly maintained. I'm not talking about guns that are missing parts. We're not going there. I'm also not going to talk about like high-end custom revolvers like this Korth that's pictured here from Nighthawk. I'm not talking about like these highly engraved collectible firearms that you carry in, you know, you have in this, this velvet lined glass case. And I'm not talking about custom high-end 1911s. You know, anything heavily engraved, anything that's, you know, way up there crazy that, that really is not a normal carry gun for most people. Okay, we're talking about off-the-shelf guns that people might actually carry. And I'm going to start with honorable mention, the high point. Now, in my experience, I've had two dealings with high point firearms. Both of them ate every round that they were fed. Uh, both were in classes that I was running. No malfunctions, no issues. But let's be honest. This thing is harder to conceal than a cinder block. It weighs like 8 pounds. It has like a 14-pound trigger. Nobody makes holsters for them. It's really, really not a good gun to carry. If you only have 150 bucks and you need a gun, my experience with them says that they work. But... I'd save up for another month or two and get something that's a little easier to carry. So here we go, number five. A gun that you can't hit the broad side of a barn with. So on my range, my target stands are about 24 inches wide and about 36 inches high. And I've actually had people come to the range with their 44 Magnum Ultralight Snub Nose Scandium Frame Super Magnum and miss the entire target frames from seven yards. That scares me. You know, you got some guy that's got an air weight 357. He only shoots 38s in it to practice and can barely hit a B1 silhouette from seven yards with 38s. And then when he leaves the range, he loads it with his 357 Magnum Ultra Mag Super Plus Ps. That scares me. If you can't hit a target reliably with a gun, you shouldn't be carrying it, period. And I don't understand people who think differently. Number four, old or obsolete cartridge firearms. I've got a picture here, an M1895 Megant, but this could be a 4440, a 3220. Uh, it could be any number of firearms that really ammo is not readily available. There's no way that you're practicing with this gun because you can't find target ammo for it. And you definitely, definitely are not carrying modern hollow points if you have an old obsolete cartridge firearm. In my lifetime, hollow points have made great advances. Defensive ammo has made great advances. And if you're carrying an obsolete cartridge that nobody makes hollow points for, you're losing those advantages. Number three, Bond Arms Derringers. I don't understand why these things are so popular. I own one. I bought one because I wanted to use it in my training classes. I can tell you, having to pull the hammer back every time, for most people, is a no-go. They're not going to remember to do it. They're very hard to shoot. They're very hard to aim. And, at least my Derringer... It's very, very hard to reload because when you shoot it, the brass expands enough that it sticks in and you almost have to have a dowel rod to knock it out. So you're only getting two shots. With the number of small micro compact 380s, 9s, and 38 specials, I just don't understand the appeal of these Derringers. I've got a 38 special air weight, 5 shot, double action only. It's pretty much the exact same size as my two-shot Derringer. Holds five rounds. You don't have to cock the hammer back every time. Bang, 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 bang. Don't understand why you pick a Derringer over there. Number two, also Bond Arms, is their newest gun, the Cyclops. 
Now I've got it pictured here. Uh, first of all, who designs a gun with a design on the muzzle so that you have to look down the barrel to see it? Mm, not a fan. But you take everything about a Bond Arms, and then you add to it that it is now a one-shot. So you take everything about a Derringer and make it a one-shot. Now, I do get the appeal of this. You're shooting a 4570 in a tiny, tiny, tiny little package. So, okay, you want to prove how manly you are and that you have, you know, the strongest wrists on the planet. Okay, this is the gun for you. But for self-defense purposes, who wants to carry a single-shot pistol, albeit 4570? If you're going to carry a single-shot pistol, it should be in 4570. But I just don't understand why you'd buy this for personal protection or concealed carry. Now, you buy it as a range toy, fine. Buy it as a range toy. That's what it is. But this is not a personal protection firearm. And number one, the NAA mini revolvers. These things are just crazy. You have to take them apart to reload them. You have to pull the hammer back between every shot. It's a single action revolver and it doesn't have a trigger guard. They don't even have a rear sight for crying out loud. And if you've ever shot one, there's nothing to hold on to. They literally jump around out of your hand every shot. It's really difficult to get five shots off without readjusting your grip. And at seven yards, any kind of speed shooting is a real challenge, even for someone who is practiced and very, very good. And my experience with these guns is people who buy them don't ever practice with them. They drop them in a pocket and forget they have them. I'll be honest with you, just not a great choice for self-defense. So anyway, that's my list, guys. Tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me if you agree or disagree. Add to the list. Is there anything that I missed? Is there anything worse than these five guns for concealed carry or personal protection? Maybe I missed something. I'd love to hear from you. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support.